welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Sock Swoosh, and I am finally getting the chance to do a video on last year 2022's results for the whole year. So this was the Sock Swoosh Show live trading room results for the entire year of 2022, $651,079. It was a good year. It was a solid year, and this is with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. You can tell how busy my life has been <laughs> in the last seven months, eight months, that I am only doing this video now. <laughs> As many of you may know, I moved at the end of 2022, so it's been super duper busy, uh, and so I'm finally getting caught up with things and getting organized in my new home, which I'm very happy, and it's good to be here. It's great to be here. So. If you're interested in more information about my trading room and my class and what I do, you can always reach out to me and email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So, trading gaps can be very lucrative. For those of you that don't know what I do, I only trade gaps. I'm mostly short, but gaps have big moves. Again, not every gap has a big move, but I'm looking for the gaps that will have the big move, and I'm looking to qualify and rate the gaps that will find, that will have not only the biggest move, but the fastest move. So it's speed, time, big move, momentum. I'm looking for institutional money when I'm looking for a gap to trade, and I'm mostly shorting. I also find that shorting can be very lucrative as well. So we're getting into halfway through the year. In fact, we're exactly halfway through the year today, July 1st. Happy July 4th, everyone. We're celebrating Independence Day here in the United States in the next few days. And it's one of the times to reevaluate where you're at. So I'm looking back on last year, assessing my results, and I'm also looking ahead for the rest of 2023 and setting my goals, have a plan of action. If you really wanna trade for a living, if this is really what you wanna do, you have to have goals, you have to have a plan of action. How are you gonna get there? Take my class first, then trade, then move forward. Do it part-time if you can't do it full-time. Start slow, start with a small risk. But again, we're gonna to talk today about the results from last year for advanced trader risk. Don't trade alone, you need support, you need support to do this. Everyone should have a support system. And being in the live room gives you that support system. Uh, now this was, you know, a one minute chart here. I just wanna show you a snap. This was a trade that we did. This fell fast and hard. And it's just a good example here of one of the things that I do very well is I'm trading on the one minute chart. So again, this was a gap. You will learn how to pick and find the best gaps in the Golden Gap class. But this was snap. Stock close here, gap down, rallying. We shorted it, got the drop. It was a really nice, quick, fast move in and out. And again, this is the profit. This is the short. This is the momentum move. This is the money move, I call it. Again, it is about chunking it out with the fast trades. And one of the reasons I prefer to short is because you get short moves fast because people panic when they're down money and they sell quickly. They sell without even thinking. Trust me. So again, going back to the beginning of 2022, the whole year of 2022, these were the results. Uh, we started out the year, closed, then we did Foot Locker. The first trade of the year was break even, no trades in the fifth. Then we got going. Netflix was a winner, 5,600. Spy was a huge winner, 10,200. QQQs was another huge winner on the 10th, 14,250. No trades on the 11th. Apple was a break even on the 12th. It was a great start to 2022. In 2022, the market fell a lot. Then there were many, many bearish uh, moves in 2022 as well, stocks to the downside. We shorted Netflix, we shorted Facebook. Netflix was a huge winner on the 13th. Again, there was earnings, earnings season's coming up in two weeks. It's a busy time to trade. We did JPM, that was another earnings trade, January 14th. This was a start off 2022. 33.75, closed for the 17th. Then we did Goldman and the SPY, two days or two trades on one day which I will sometimes do, but not always. If I have two good gaps that rate the same, then I might. Jan that was January 18th, no trades on the 19th. The 20th we did AA, which was a little baby winner, and then UAL, which was a nice trade. Netflix we did again on the 21st. 
The 24th, we did the SPY, 4,020. Apple's a winner on the 25th. Microsoft lost the first trade, then a huge winner on the 26th. McDonald's was a loser. BA was a big winner. Then we did BA a second day on the 28th. Then we did Apple, which was a nice winner. UPS, one trade loss, second trade won. PayPal was a winner, 41.60 on February 2nd. And we did Facebook on the 3rd, which is now Meta. Uh, January, I mean, uh, February 4th, we did four. That was a nice winner, 6,460. Then we did BABA, the 7th. The Q's lost on the 8th. Then we did a big trade in Facebook. Then on the 9th, we did Apple that lost, Netflix lost. Then we did another Apple and a break leave in Netflix. That day was a losing day. Things didn't work right that day. But we turned it around the next day by doing PayPal twice, but the second trade was big and the QQQs, which was a big winner, 12,606. UAA was a nice winner, 25,20 on the 11th and the 14th and 15th new trades. Then we did the Qs two days in a row. Again, I remember this, the market was selling off. We shorted the market, 4,700 profit on the 16th. 17th was 35,20. Again, when you take a trade, you should size yourself and figure one to one. If you're risking 3,000, you're trying to make 3,000. If you're risking 2,000, you're trying to make 2,000. You're trying to flip it over one. And again, these are all day trades. These are all trades on margin. So you will need a margin account. February 18th, Facebook lost. Then we did a big winner in the QQQ. SPY lost, then a winner. Low one at 1885 on the 23rd. SPY was a loser on the 24th. 25th, we did Full Locker, which was a winner. BA was a winner on the 28th. BA was a baby winner on March 1st. FSLR did not work. Zoom was a nice winner. Then we did BA again on the 3rd. BA was a big short last year too. March 4th, we did BA again. We did the SPY. Again, market was falling. March 7th, we did the QQQs, 9350. If you find the, the market's too expensive, and I day trade the market on the room on, option, uh, on a margin, you could do an option in it. You could buy at the strike or at the money strike whatever trade I'm calling in the room, you could do as an options trade if you don't want to do, for example, the market ETFs and options um, as, a, as a day trade. You could do it as an option. So like, for example, say I would short the market at a certain number. You could buy the strike at that number with that week's expiration or even the day because the QQQs and the SPY now have daily expirations and the price of those is cheap. So there's another idea if you do not want to set up a margin account. But all of these trades in the room are, are trades on margin. And I call the entry, the stop, and the exit in the live room. So again, how much money you want to risk is really going to be dependent on how much money you have in your account cash-wise. If you want to ask me for your advice, you can. It's really totally, totally up to you. But I think you should start out slow at the beginning and then grow it as you get better over time. It's one of these things, if you feel comfortable risking an advanced trader risk, I will go for it after the class, but you have to take the class first. So the Golden Gap course is a prerequisite to join the live room. Everybody in the room has done the class, the trades set up fast, and you have to know how to do them. March 8th then, the QQQs was a loser. Then we had a winner, 4,200. No trains on March 9th. Again, some days something will not meet the criteria. If it does not meet my criteria, then I'm not gonna do it. I won't do any trades that day. Again, part of having a system is following the system and following the system to the letter. March 10th, we did BA, which was a loser. SPY was a loser. QQQs was a winner. 11th and 14th off. Apple was a loser twice and CBX. Then we did CBX the next day. I doubled up on that with an ad, it did not work, and then I did a second trade in it. No trades on March 17th. March 18th was FDX, which was a winner. Uh, BA was a loser on the 21st. CBX was a winner on the 21st. March 22nd was BA lost, CCL lost, CBX won 45.60. Adobe 38.25 was a winner on the 23rd. No trades on the 24th. Baba lost on the 25th, Q's lost on the 25th, and then we did another QQQ trade, 39.20 on the 25th. No trains on March 28th that met the criteria. AA lost on the 29th, we did CBS, which was a big winner, 10,080. Again, earnings season tends to have, stocks tend to have big moves during earnings season, and that's the time you wanna trade. That's the time that is the most profitable to trade. And again, if you happen to get the market volatility with you too, 
the better. March 30th, Chewy lost. Facebook lost. Spy was a huge winner on March 30th. Again, this was 2022. The market was gapping down a lot and was falling a lot. We did WBA 2170 March 31st. On April 1st, the QQQs was 46.50 profit. On <clears throat> April 4th, no trades. April 5th, Twitter loss, CVX loss. BA was a huge winner. QQQs was a winner and CVX lost a second trade. Again, we did do that quite a bit in 2022 as well. That day, CVX did not work. But BA was a huge winner on April 5th. April 6th, BA won 66.25, SPY won 3200. April 7th, off. April 8th, we did the QQQs 29.80. Then on April 11th, the first Q lost. The second one was a huge winner. We got stopped, then we took it again. Again, I'll call the stops in the room. I'll call the live trades in the room with a stop. It's a limit order stop. Again, these are equity trades. You put the stop in. If it stops you out, you lose. If we retake it, we retake it. You can't have an unlimited risk when you trade. You have to set your risk, and that means you got to put a stop in. Otherwise, you really have unlimited risk. And again, I make sure I'm flat before I ever close out my platform in any single day. Make sure you are flat out of everything. And if I'm in a trade and it didn't hit me out or stop me before four and it's on margin, I'm not holding it overnight. I'm not doing that, okay? I'm just killing it then if it didn't go right, even if it's with a partial loss before the close. April 12th was JPM, which was a winner, 5,355. No trades on April 13th. April 14th was WFC, which was a loser. QQQs was a winner, 6,300. April 18th, Q's lost. Q's was a big winner, 9,440. And then we did the Q's, which lost one trade, lost one trade, worked, and J&J, &J, one trade, lost, and one trade, worked on the 19th. Then on April 20th, we did Netflix, 6,300. Nice, solid gain. AA was a winner, 2480 on the 21st. April 22nd, we did Verizon, 2720, and no trades on April 25th. Then on April 26th, we did JetBlue, which was a profit of 3,500. Then on the 27th, we did BA again. BA was a big one in 2022, that's for sure. Profit of 3,632. Then we did CAT, 4,015. INTC for 2,700. And then to start out the month of May, we did the Qs twice, which did not work. Then I did it a third time for a big trade. That, that required two retakes, <clears throat> actually, to do the QQQs. And then on May 3rd, we did CHGG, which was a loser. Then we did win, which was 2125 winner. Then we did Lyft, which worked out really nicely, 4120. Then we did Etsy, 4680. Again, May is, earn, is uh, earning season. So you know, you will have a lot of gaps at the beginning of May. We did the SPY 4740, was off on the 9th and the 10th. Then we did the QQQs twice on May 11th. One was a loser, one was a winner. Off on May 12th. On May 13th, I did Twitter, which did not work. This is before Twitter went private. We did Twitter a few times, actually, uh, in 2022 before Musk bought it. There were nice trades. CVX law uh cvx won and again cvx when we did it in 2022 we were mostly doing that long so while most of the trades on that we do in the room are shorts we will occasionally go long and cvx uh which is chevron oil was rallying remember this was the beginning of 2022 when the ukraine and russia conflict started we were going long oil a lot last year twitter on may 16th was a good one 34 10. Then on May 17th, Walmart was another nice trade, 25.50. Then we did Target on the 18th, 3,115. No trades on the 19th. D was a nice winner, 4,900 on May 20th. No trades on the 23rd. Again, if something doesn't rate 20 points or more, I'm not doing it. And in a 17, 18, 19, it's 50, 50 chance of working or failing. So the rule is 20. Again, when you take my class and learn the 26 points, you'll understand why. And, and when you think about it, you know, 20 things is a lot to get in the points. 
So you got to stick with high odds. That's the whole reason that I developed the system. I want high odds trades. If I don't have high odds trades, then I don't feel like I want to do the trade at all. May 24th, ANF lost. Facebook lost. Then it lost again. Then we did BA on the 25th, which did not work. And we did CVX, which was a solid profit of 2,500. May 26th, no trades. May 27th, WDA did not work. Big was a loser too. And then we did a second retake in WDA, which worked, which was a big trade, 12,870. So sometimes something doesn't hit right out of the gate and you gotta be patient and wait. I always, always, always go after something early though. I always, always do. But in this case here, this WDA needed a little bit more time. Then on May 31st, we did CVX twice, which didn't work, and the SPY lost too. So that was a losing day to end May. Then we started out good with June. This was June 1st. Walmart was a winner, 27.90. Then we did Microsoft, which lost an HPE with a small loser and then a solid gain in that 44.80. June 3rd, we did Crowd, which lost. Apple, which was a winner, 61.20, and the QQQs, which was a big winner, 8,400. Then off June 6th through the 8th. Then June 9th, we did three trades in the SPY. Two lost and one worked. Uh, that, was a, that was a challenging, challenging move, but I kept after it. And then there was a big winner in the SPY, 14,110. June 10th, we did the QQQs, 2595. June 13th, we did the QQQs, 2550. I think I did day trades and options more. I think I did the market and the QQQs and the SPY when I say the market. I think I traded the market more in 2022, day trades and options trades more than I ever traded in the 15 years that I've traded actually. Just because there were so many bearish setups, there were so many setups to the downside, there were so many gap downs, there were so many short setups. We had so, so, so many sell off days um, that it was so profitable to trade the market, um, to short the market outright, short it in 2022. So we, we, we were doing the market a lot. Uh, June 14th, no trades. June 15th, no trades. June 16th, the QQQs was a winner, 3510, and the SPY was a winner, 4032. June 17th, Adobe lost. Target was a winner, 3360. No trades on June 21st. June 26th was the QQQs, which lost. UAL won, which was on the 23rd, 3,600, and no trades on June 24th. Then on June 27th, we did save, which was a winner, 24.50. Uh, we did Nike, which was a loser, uh, the first trade, but the second Nike worked for 44.55. That required a retake. Then on the 29th, we did the QQQs for 2244. And then on the 30th, we did the QQQs 4505. We were closed um, on July 1st. Then July 5th, the QQQs lost. July 6th, no trades. July 7th, no trades. July 8th, SPY lost. Twitter was a winner, 2900. Again, this is still when Twitter was a public company. July 11th, we did Twitter, 5180. No trades on the 12th. Dow was a winner on the 13th. Off on the 14th, no trades of 15th. GS lost the first trade and then won the second trade, 4480. This was the beginning of earnings season that in last year in July. And then IBM was a winner at 3384. I have to look up the date of that when that's gonna be in July, the earnings for that too. July 20th, IBM was a winner, 1562. July 21st, UAL was a winner. 34.80, July 22nd, Meta first trade loss, which used to be Facebook. Meta won then 11,100 and Snap was a solid winner, 57.60. No trades on July 25th. July 26th, Walmart lost, QQQs won, 28.50. July 27th, Microsoft was a winner, 59.60 and Love was a winner, 2,700 on the 28th. July 29th, was off and August 1st. August 2nd, CAT lost, QQQs lost, BA was a winner, 9,064. CVS was a winner, 5,600. eBay was a winner on August 4th, 1350. Again, this is still earnings season. These are earnings trades. 
That's the best time to trade. August 5th, boom, TWLO was a winner, 34.85. TSM was a winner, 2,600. August 9th was a winner, the QQQs, 3,200. Just, you know, that was a good, good week. Actually, August was a good month. August 10th, no trades. August 11th, 6 was a winner, 39.60. August 12th, Disney was a winner, 26.10. August 15th, no trades. August 16th, Walmart was a winner, 24.30. The 17th, we did Target was a winner, 27.82. And then on the 18th, KSS didn't work and QQQs didn't either. Came back, huge trade in the market on the August 19th, 12,900. Again, we did the market so much last year. August 22nd, the QQQs was a winner, 4,400. August 23rd, SPY lost the first trade, second trade worked. JWM was a winner that was earnings, 2010 profit on August 24th. CRM lost on the 25th, and then I didn't go after it again. The SPY lost too. Arvell was a huge trade on August 26th, 8,100 profit, and August 29th, then on August 30th, Twitter was a winner, 1,960. Then on the 31st, we did Chewy, which did not work. We did HPQ, which was a good one, 3,160. Then it was September. September 1st, CN didn't work, but the SPY was a big winner, 5,850. Off on the 2nd, no trades on the 6th. September 7th, FDX was break even. That's rare, but something may just not work or we kill it. Uh, September 8th, AEO lost, Q's lost, and then we had a huge winner in a retake in the Q's. Then on September 9th, CVX was a nice, solid gain. 12th, that was off. 13th, the QQQ's was a winner, 5,040. The 14th, Square was a winner. The 15th, Adobe was a big winner. Q's lost, and then a second Q's trade. The 16th, we did FDX. That's FDX, not FD there. <laughs> Uh, first, it lost. Then the second trade lost too. So that just, just for whatever reason, did not work out that particular day. Either retake, but then I laid off of it. September 19th, no trains. September 20th was Nike, which was a winner. September 21st, Apple didn't work. Nike didn't work the second day. AA was a solid winner on the 21st. Then on the 22nd, we did the SPY and the Qs. And again, usually the market goes together and we will do them sometimes simultaneously. Then on the 23rd, we did the QQQs for winner, 43.50. No trades on the 26th or the 27th. September 28th, we did Apple, 5,300. Uh, then we did on September 29th, the QQQs, 7,680. September 30th, Nike lost, CVX lost. No trades on the, on the 4th of October. QQQs won on the 5th, 51.25, and then October 6th was no trades. October 7th was the QQQs, 2,600. October 10th, we were closed. Then on the 11th, we did two Qs. One loss, one won. October 12th, BA lost, QQQs lost. October 14th was off. October 17th, BAC was a winner, and Goldman was a winner on the 18th. Then on the 19th, we did GNRC, which was a winner, 57.75. Then on the 20th, we did a bunch of trades in Tesla. I did one with an ad that didn't work, one was break even, and then we had two winners. So that was a wild one that particular day. That was in October. October 21st, the Qs lost and the SPY. LVS was a winner on the 24th. XRX was a winner. That was earnings on the 25th, 6,350. October 26, Google lost, Microsoft lost, and then we had a massive winner in Google. 29,100, that was going into October 26. Then on October, this was earnings season, October 27th, Meta lost, Microsoft lost, Google lost, then we had retakes that worked. So then we had the second trade in Meta that worked. We had a second trade in Microsoft that worked huge. Again, it's up to you if you end up deciding that you want to do retakes or not, because very often they do pay off, but you have to be, you have to understand that sometimes the second trade could lose as well. I would go by the gap rating. Now, then on October 28th, Amazon, both trades lost. Spy loss on the 31st. Meta worked, 67.20. Uber was a winner on the 11th, I mean, uh, on the 1st of the November. November 2nd, SPY won, QQQs won on November 3rd, 25.50, and no trades on November 4th. 
November 7th was Apple, 2016. Then we did T2 on the 8th, which lost. Lyft was a big winner. Disney was a winner, 4,800 on the 9th. November 10th, we did NVIDIA and win, neither one of which worked. And then November 11th, we were off. It was Veterans Day. November 14th, Amazon lost and the Qs, the first trades. And then we did retakes. Uh, the QQQ second one was a little one. Walmart was a huge winner on November 15th, 7,560. And November 16th, we did two trades in Target that lost. And then we did a QQQ that won and a SPY that won. Again, we were shorting the market a lot last year in 2022, specifically because there were many good golden gap downs in the market. Then I moved, so then I was off for like two weeks. Gerard did the run, my assistant, one of my assistants. Then I came back, we had a good start back with a Tesla. Tesla worked on December 5th, 1,620. No trades on the 6th. Then we did two Teslas on the 7th, one lost, one worked. Then on the 8th, we did Tesla again. Then on the 9th, we did AA twice. Then we did Tesla again, December 12th. I remember we were shorting Tesla a lot in December, 3,550. Then we did CVX, 1,675 on the 13th. No trades on the 14th. The QQQ won 3,300 on the 15th. And we did the SPY for a huge trade. And the QQQs, which was my last trading day of the year, which was December 16th. And then I took off to finish unpacking um, which I still didn't finish anyways, but I took off for the holiday and, uh, got a lot done, but still didn't get everything done. I didn't really even get my entire office unpacked until spring of 2023, if you can even believe it. And that was the year. So let's just talk a little bit about margin here. This is, this is one of the nice trades we did. Um, and again, this was a short, okay. Just to go over again, I look for gaps. But this was JPM. Stock closed here, gap down, fell off a planet. So again, closed up here around 138 and change, opened in the morning around 136 something and fell. Okay, so when you're taking, when you're deciding to do a trade, you have to decide your risk, which is the difference between the stop and the, and the um, entry. And then you also have to have enough margin or buying power to take the trade too. So you could say, well, I have a 10 cent stop, but if the stock costs, you know, $350 a share, you may not have the buying power to do as many shares as you want with a small stock. Do you follow me? So anyways, this is, I'd say this is a mid-range mid -range point. We do stocks that are sometimes way more expensive than JPM, but you know, uh, over $100 a share, you could, say, you could say that's pricey. But this was one that really had a lot of bang for its buck. So the entry in this was 135.35. Okay, so this was an advanced trader risk, but I just want to show you with a share size of 4,000, again, that's a, that's a good amount of, of position size. This isn't a day trade on margin. This isn't an options trade. I'm just showing you. Exit 131.70, the profit was 14,600. Now, what I'm going to show you here is if, for example, you wanted to do you know, a trade on margin, okay, Say you wanted to do a thousand shares of JPM. Now, if you wanted to do at a cost per share of 135.35, your cost, this is the cost of the position. This isn't the cash you're putting on at risk. And again, this isn't even, forget about the stop right now. A thousand shares would cost you 135.350. If you are at a broker, okay, where you are on four to one margin, you would need $33,837.50 of cash. Again, that doesn't mean if the trade fails, you're gonna lose that much. This is one thing people don't understand about margin. You will get out of the trade with a loss when you get stopped. As you saw in some of the trades here we talked about for last year that stopped, where I lost 3,000, 2,500, whatever. That wasn't the cost of my position. That was where I put a limit order stop. I call it a hard stop, but it's a limit order stop where it hits me out. That is what you're risking per trade. But you need the cash to take a thousand shares. For example, of JPM, you would have needed on a four to one margin, this is a retail brokerage, you would have needed 33,837.50. Now, what if you wanted to do 500 shares of course, the cost was left, 67675 buying power. That's a cost, the cost, the cost to take the trade. But on margin, 
which you have to day trade on margin. Everyone day trades on margin. These are all margin trades that I call in the live room. 500 shares with a retail broker at 4 to 1 margin. You would have needed 16,918.75. And again, I just want to go back and show you this moved, okay, approximately $4 or so. But again, it actually moved more than that from the whole thing, but I'm just showing you from the move. Now, the reason the margin is important is for any individual, any one person to trade the market without having to have, you know, a million dollars cash in their account. Everyone uses margin, okay? And everyone that day trades uses margin. So if you want to be in and out of trades 5, 10, 15 minutes, and you use a stop, the risk is the stop. These are not trades you're holding overnight. Every trade that we reviewed here was a day trade that was called in the live room. And when I say day trade, I mean you work flat before four, okay? So let's talk about margin. Margin helps you be able to take a larger position than you would, than you would be able to on cash. But the cost of the position is not what you have at risk, okay? What you have at risk is whatever you risk, depending on how many shares you take, the difference between the entry and the stop. So for example, if the stop's 50 cents and you took 1,000 shares and it would stop out, okay, and the stop's 50 cents, how much are you gonna lose? 500 bucks, that's it, okay? So again, that cost of whatever stock you took on that particular day to take that thousand shares. Could be JPM, could be Marvell, could be Target, could be the QQQs. The cost will vary depending on the cost of the stock or ETF that you were trading. So again, four to one margin is what retail brokers offer. There are prop brokers out there. You must look into them and do your due diligence, but they can offer 10 to one margin if that's something that you wanna look into as well. But margin is a bonus, it's a plus. It's, it's something where the, the broker actually helps you by letting, letting you borrow the cost on leverage to take the position. You are gonna be flat or you should be flat by four. And if you're following in the room, you will be flat by four. Now getting back to the risk per trade, all the trades for 2022 was an average risk of $2,800 per trade. I have not raised my risk in a while. I'm considering doing it because 2023 has been a good year. 2022 is a good year. I'm on track for the year for 2023 to meet my goals for the year. So I'm thinking about increasing my risk. The longer you train, you'll realize that when you get in a comfortable position with your risk, it is kind of sometimes hard to change it because, again, when you're comfortable with your risk, you take the trade based on the knowledge and the information, not about fear of losing. I never take a trade and I'm afraid that I'm losing. If I'm afraid that I'm going to lose in the trade, then it probably isn't a good enough gap or I have too much risk on in the trade. So gauge that for yourself. Back it off. Back your risk off. Or again, if you don't have the strategy that you're following to make the pick, then you probably don't even know if you're in the right direction, right, or the right stock pick. But again, can you trade with a beginner risk? Yes. I would do what's comfortable for you. After the class, you can take $100 risk if you want. You could take 100 shares if you want. Okay? You don't have to trade thousands of shares. But a lot of people are doing uh, options too. Now, again, the options are on the options newsletter, but I use the same system to call the options newsletter. If you're in the room and you don't want to do a short on margin in the QQQs, then buy a put if we short it, for example. So again, the, one of the benefits that people like to do with trading options is because you can open up an options account with $2,000 with a small amount of money. Either way, however you decide to trade, whether you want to trade options or day trades, everything that I do, if you come and learn from me, is based on my 26-point rating system. That's what I teach in the class, and that is the reason that I am successful trading the stock market. That's the reason I'm able to read stocks in the direction of bias so well in the market. Now, I will say that for 2022, again, it was a, it was a really good year to get sell-off moves in the overall market in both the market indices. 2023 has been a different kind of a year because we were... Bullish some period, some weeks we fell. We were back and forth in a tight range some other weeks. So 2023, in my mind, while, while we're in an uptrend, that's true, it's been a choppy year, I think, to do the market ETFs. So it's been a better year to focus on selective stocks in 2023 versus the market. And I know a lot of people love to trade the market every single day, but you can't do that because the market doesn't have a directional bias every day that you're going to be able to read in the pre-market. And the earlier you can read the, the bias of something to trade it, the faster you can be in, the faster you can be out, 
And also the market doesn't have a big move every day. And we're also looking for stocks that have big moves like JPM, for example. Now, if you wanna learn what I know, you can take my class. It's called the Going Gap course. I teach this class once a month, once a month. And I'm trying to give a lot of time for people. And again, my schedule has been very hectic, very hectic. I mean, not just the last you know eight months, but I'd say the last year. So I'm trying to plan for myself in advance and give people the time to plan as well. But if you want to take my Golden Gap course, your opportunity is now. You can sign up for July 22nd and 23rd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition is $69.99 U.S. dollars. Anyone can take it in the world. You can trade in a different country the U.S. stock market, which people love. So you can do it. Class is online. Again, you could be anywhere in the world to take it. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. The combo is the trends and the golden gap you save if you sign up for both, which is $74.99. Again, this is a prerequisite to join the room. You want to get these results, you want to start trading, you must do the class first. Now, if you just want to do options, I have two picks, six month subscription for $49.99 and 12 months for $69.99. This is a lot of newsletters. No prerequisites, no class that you have to do for to take this and sign up. The newsletters are emailed to you. There are no trials. And if you want to sign up for this, email me too, if you just want the options trades. But if you want to learn the class, sign up for the class. It's a great course. Again, it's all weekend. And you will learn a ton, a ton in that two-day course. If you're interested in more information on the Golden Gap course for July, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great day.